Now, we will not discuss certain events that happened in Dallas, and I'm not going to mention it, but we all know we'll leave that alone. We'll talk about that in another show. However, we was in Dallas from Friday to Monday. Dallas is a great city. Texas overall, great people, great hospitality, loved it. 85 degrees all week. Every day we was there, and then we came home to 54 degrees in rain and cold. But to the subject at hand, WrestleMania 32, and we'll talk about other things and I'll announce it later. WrestleMania 32, of course, before last week, week beforehand, on Under the Mint Radio, on Wrestling Black and White, we talked about how the WrestleMania card was whack, which it was. Nobody was looking forward to this WrestleMania. This WrestleMania will be weak. <clears throat> it will be as bad as WrestleMania 11 or WrestleMania 13 or WrestleMania 15 or even 27. But there's been much debate, even within the staff and under the mat radio or over the Internet, about how good was WrestleMania 32. Now, we was there live, me, NFC Game Boy, Afro City Queen, Michael Mortal Seeds, Michael D. We thoroughly enjoyed the show. I don't know how it came off on TV. We did see a couple of matches, but being there live, the atmosphere was great. The fans was loud. We thought the show was pretty darn good. For it to be for the card to be what it was, definitely, definitely was a lot better than our expectations. Um, NFC Game Boy, give you a, a quick thoughts, and then we'll turn it over to Angry Mark and then Saltine and Toph because I know they feel differently. Actually, uh, Tech, if if I don't mind, I would like to go last this time. I, I want Angry Mark, Saltine, and Toph to go ahead and, and, and get out their, uh, their aggression about it because all three of them seem very displeased about this WrestleMania. Oh, yes. So I, I, I actually want to go last. So I'm, I'm going okay, to, cool. I'm going to, I'm going to go at the end of this one, so and we'll, you don't mind. We'll do that. That's fine. And after everybody get their overall, the start, we'll go match by match and give everybody their viewpoints on um. If we okay. agree or disagree, what happened? So go ahead, Angry Mark. Well, if I'm going to just give a grade, if we're going to break it down match by match, then I'll go through that as we go. But mm-hmm. as an overall grade on, let's say, you know, A through F, I'm going to give this WrestleMania a C plus. Okay? Hmm. Giving it a C plus, and I'm only giving it a C plus because – of two things, the triple threat ladies match and Shane McMahon having fucking balls like King Kong. That's it. Those are the only two reasons I even give it a passing grade. Mm. All right. Thanks for that quick synopsis. Tofi, you there, man? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, give your quick synopsis of Mania real quick. This whole team. Um... It was six hours of nothing. Nothing of significant importance or value happened. The outcomes of most of the matches made no sense. It was just a kind of boring show that was just there. It was pretty much the sequel to WrestleMania 29, like I said it would be. No stars were made coming out of the show. After NXT TakeOver, you felt excited, you felt invigorated, and you were looking forward to the future, and after WrestleMania, you were just kind of like, okay, it was just there. So I, I give the show a C minus. Oh. Mm. Oh. So Angry Mark and Toph get the same grade that they gave Batman versus Superman. <laughs> um, just to let you know, I'm already getting, <clears throat> um, no pun intended, angry tweets. Not tweets, angry texts and facing messages that's uh, disagreeing with angry Mark and Tove. Salting. Salting. And they one. give a shit. Well, Who cares? <laughs> well, add me salting. to that fucking angry to you, you know. I give it a damn C. Why? Because, one, I'm proud of AJ and I'm proud of Kevin Steen getting their recommend moment. Respect them because I met them personally. Um, that's one thing. Two, does that why I won the IC champion? But something happened on the next night, but we'll go to that soon. Third, the women's match was ballsy, and I give them respect and honor for that. But one thing they should have let Sasha Banks won, because 
they did a documentary on this woman like she was going to win it all. This is her funny moment. And guess what? Charlotte won. And I'm like, what the fuck? You putting all this empathy on Tasha Banks and y'all ain't going to let her win the belt? That's really fucked up. So, so did you say empathy? <laughs> yeah, empathy. That's what I said. <laughs> All right, NFC, go, 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 go ahead, man. Okay, I, I'm gonna try to try to make it quick because uh, everybody pretty much has short comments and stuff. Um, this is my sixth consecutive WrestleMania, and I was there at WrestleMania 29. And this WrestleMania, first and foremost, was the most beautiful looking WrestleMania that I've ever seen. Um, all three of the matches were not super spectacular. I will agree with Toph was saying they didn't make any stars. I will also agree with Angry Mark by saying that the two best moments was, of course, the women's match and Shane McMahon just doing what Shane McMahon does. The reason why I will also give it a C is because of those reasons, but not <coughs> only that, they had nothing else to work with. The roster was fucking bone thin. What they pretty Never much did was sent everything they could. Never did it make seen. sense? No, it didn't really make a lot of sense. But was it entertaining? That was the most important part. I pretty much got to see HBK, Stone Cold Steve Austin, DDP, Shane McMahon, The Undertaker, Triple H, Mick Foley, and a host of others in one fucking WrestleMania. Even if it was for three minutes, I got a chance to see that. And these are all wrestlers that I always wanted to see, but never got a chance to. Then did that make my opinion a little different? Yes, you can say that. But looking from a fan standpoint, isn't that what WrestleMania is supposed to do? Now, I can't speak about the network because a lot of people said that the network went down. I know that stock has did crash a little bit uh, as of yesterday from what I was looking at because a lot of people were very displeased at the network for – uh, is lagging and crashing and stuff during WrestleMania. So I can understand that. But when you really don't have nothing else, when a lot of your top stars are injured, you throw everything you can in there. And I'm pretty sure he paid out his checkbook to have Austin and them just make cameos and stuff. And shout out to New Day with the Dragon Ball Z reference. I can't oh, yeah, stand the motherfuckers, right. but God damn it, that shit was hard as hell. Oh, we, you know we, yeah, we, we will... We we will get well, to that. I, I, we will. We'll talk about that. But yeah. no, this was, wasn't a memorable WrestleMania. This wasn't one of the ones that you know you walk away and just felt you know complete. But I give them credit for at least sending everything they can to try to to try to salvage and try to make something out of this WrestleMania. And yeah. God damn it, it looked great as hell live. I don't know how it looked <clears> on TV. Maybe TV just didn't do it justice. But I'm pretty sure if you make it there and you actually see it live, maybe your perception might change a little bit. Maybe it might make you feel just a little bit more scrimmish or make you feel just a little more, more proud. To you know piggy uh, to piggyback on what uh on, on what Game Boy was saying, I felt that WrestleMania catered to the casuals, not the hardcores. And when I mean the hardcores, I'm not just talking about the internet fans or you know I'm not talking about the IWC or the YWC because there's a lot of hardcore. WWE fans that are not part of that. I'm talking about when I when I refer to hardcore, I'm talking about the fans that watch Raw every week, that watch SmackDown every week. You know, I'm talking about dedicated WWE fans. The show was like six hours long. Like when you look at it, it was almost like two WrestleManias in, in one show. It was way too long. It went over. When you look at the highlights of WrestleMania 32, like what are the highlights? Like think about the highlights of the show. The highlights are all okay. old guys. Chris Jericho beats AJ Styles. Mick Foley, Ooh. Shawn Michaels, and Steve Austin Ooh. beat down the League of Nations and New Day. We will, we will get to sure. that. But 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 the counter argue so has that not you can't blame WrestleMania this year for something that's been an issue for WWE the past few years. That even back since what year was it? Ricky Steamboat went against Jericho in Mania. Jericho beat him. Yeah, but, sure but the, 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 highlight, the highlight was still Ricky Steamboat and Shawn Michaels Undertaker. So I will disagree with that. 
I will not blame WrestleMania 30T for that issue with the old guys being the highlight because that's just how the business is right now. Because the past few manias and WWE in general, the highlight has always been the old guys. I disagree they, with that, but okay. They weren't they weren't okay. even the highlight. Of WrestleMania the 30 featured old guys, hold, hold on, but hold on, it still hold on, hold on. had young guys highlighted. Hold, hold, hold on. Go, 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 Amy Mark. The old guys didn't even make the highlight reel, in my opinion. Okay. The Rock, Stone Cold, Mick Foley, HBK, they don't even make my highlight of WrestleMania. Not even close. Okay. These guys were so misused across the board, and we'll get into it while we're doing match by doing match yeah. by match. And I'll get more into it. I'll keep it short. That way we can get this thing going. But yep. they were mis- misused. They are not a part of any highlight reel for me whatsoever. And for the money they put out, they did not deliver the product that they should have to bring these four guys in who cost them, listen to this, The Rock, $800,000. Okay, Stone Cold Steve Austin, half a million dollars. HBK, two hundred. Mick Foley, thirty thousand. Tell me where we got our money's worth out of that, and we'll get into it later. Hmm. Okay. So, I'll see any quick comments, real quick, before we start going match by match. Yeah, everything's good. I say my piece about it. Okay. Now I do have I have a request tech and Game Boy. Can we please not cover the kickoff show and just oh, cover well, Mania? That, 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 no, no we, we wasn't. I'm about to say we wasn't playing on. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was very. I thought that was very disrespectful. I read a report that said that there was some type of group meeting, which I believe because I know McMahon used to hold those back in the. Uh, the 90s, you know, when WWF was going through hard times in the 90s, in the, uh, you know, 95 when things were going bad. And supposedly they said that if you were in the, you know, the kickoff show, they considered the kickoff show and the main show one big show, you know. So they were trying to tell the talent, you know, if you're in the kickoff show, don't feel bad. You're just as important. I felt so bad for Kalisto and Ryback. I mean, half the arena was empty. And from what I understand, there was, I mean, you guys were there, but. I read that there was some type of door issue. Some of the doors wouldn't open. I mean, things kind of filled up by the time the Dudleys were out there. But those first two matches, man, you could see a lot of empty seats. It was almost like an empty arena match. That wasn't cool. Well, Coach, if you follow Under the Mat on Twitter, you will see pictures of those seats that are empty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can decide. Just saying. Uh, Got to do a cheap plug. Yeah, good. That's fine. It's... Um, this real quick for the kickoff show. We when we we got to our seats about when when did we get to our seats? Was it when the Dudleys? It was, uh, it was the end of the uh, Divas match, the Team Bad, whatever the match was. No one saw. We didn't even know the U.S. title match happened. We thought the title match yeah, was for still going to be on the they main card. With it. We we didn't know that it was on. It happened on the pre-show. So I think on Monday not Monday morning during the day. I mean, of course, it was, we thought maybe they just scratched the match off because, you know, Carl said that to change. Shout out to Africa Queen who kept saying that. We thought they just etched it off and just would put it on the Raw after Mania. But um, nobody talked about it at all. But we won't cover the, the kickoff show at all. Um, starting off Mania, and as Arn Anderson says, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but toot toot. I believe someone, not going to say who was Tech, Mentioned that WrestleMania would start off with a ladder match. I think I think I did say that. Did I not last week? Yeah, I did. Yes, you did. And that was the first thing, as I figured, WrestleMania 32 started ladder match, which I might add, man, NFC Game Boy, Afro Century Queen mentioned, our predictions were way off. We were, we had a losing percentage for this. So who we thought would win and lose, we were pretty much wrong a lot at Mania, which I thought was kind of cool. Ladder match started off, kicked off the show as I predicted. Um, of course, we know who was in it: Zack Ryder, Stardust, Ziggler, Owen Zane, Sin Cara, and uh, D 
them is, you know, Angry Mark loves Kevin Owens. <clears throat> I'll start off live. <laughs> um, <laughs> Owens got the biggest pop for this match coming out. Stardust got mm-hmm. a big pop. Of course, I'm winning. You know, should be the Dusty. Um, every, everybody, I'll give it, everybody got pretty big pops. But the biggest pop was Kevin Owens, Zack Ryder, and then it was uh, Stardust and Ziggler. But um, I thought the match was pretty good. Could have been better, better ladder match, yes. Maybe it's me being spoiled for the, the TLC matches and the ladder matches before. I thought it was a decent match. I thought it was pretty good. And Zack Ryder won, which I'm glad he did. Glad he did win. So, start up, start thing, go up, man. Give your thoughts to this IC title ladder match. Um, I actually thought it was okay. And everybody put their um, put on the show and their little record. Moments because I remember they used to have the money in the bank. That was the main match moments because everybody doing crazy shit from there. And it was still doing crazy. All the end, I was glad that Ryder won because I say this guy has been through so much since 2011. He won the U.S. champion, then lost it. I forgot who he lost it. I guess Dolph Ziggler won or the Miz won up. And then, and then on the other so you already know, whatever Monday when we get to that. Um, but I was pretty much glad that that right had his wrestling moments because I always liked the guy and I thought he was tight back then. Mm-hmm. All right, go ahead, Tof. This match was fine. It was pretty much the match of the night for me. And after this yeah. match, everything went downhill. Uh, I was one of the few people that predicted Ryder to win because Owens and Zane doesn't need a title because it's a blood feud. Everyone in the match looked good. It was the best way to start off the show. Everybody in the match got their stuff in. And it was really just about Ryder having a WrestleMania moment because he deserved it. So it was a good match. And pretty much the only good match on the entire card. And everything just went downhill from here. Hmm. Angry Mark. All right. So this match here, to me, is kind of like the seventh round of the NFL draft, you know, pick 299 or 199, whatever it is, okay? This match did nothing for me, okay, at all. But you got to put it into context why. So I'm going to – I got to give why. You have Kevin Owens lose his Intercontinental title who he claims he's a prize fighter. He wants his belt. It's his belt, you know. Even when he didn't have the belt, it was still his belt. And then on Monday Night Raw, when Zack Ryder is out there, there is no Kevin Owens. There is no prize fighter. There's no segments in the back. The match made no sense because of how it was carried to Monday Night Raw. The storylines did not mesh. We got transitional champions in Ryder and Miz until they figure out who they actually want to put the belt on. Zack Ryder lost his rematch tonight due to interference from Maurice on SmackDown. Okay. The the latter matches at Mania and all the big pay-per-views, you have that major spot you know, or two major spots that are like, oh, wow, awesome. This match did not have that. And I don't want to hear anybody say the splash on Cody Rhodes was the spot. It wasn't. I don't want to hear about Sin Cara doing a a top rope flip because he does those on Monday Night Raw onto people all the time. This match did nothing for nobody. It gave Ryder his moment, okay, and then Triple H and them were like, hey, put the Miz over, you know, for like three weeks or so until we figure out who we're going to give the belt to, and then we're just going to send you back down, put you in some tie-dye and some yellow, and you're a hype bro. So, I mean, the, the match did nothing to advance anything. It didn't even advance the feud of Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens because it wasn't carried over properly. Okay, you don't put losers into a match 
to be the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship. Period. You don't put losers in that situation. And the last time I checked, how many losers were in the fatal four-way? Mm. All of them. All of them were losers. How do you how do you how do you do that creatively? So that's why the ladder match at WrestleMania to me was no more than a flush of the toilet. I will give that a failing grade because of how it was carried over. Hmm. Alright, well <clears throat> NSC Game Boy. Hey. Um, okay, so I didn't see Monday Night Raw. Wait, My DVR didn't record it. Oh, hold on, guys. We have a restricted number call. Get, get, go, go ahead, NFC Game Boy. Go keep talking. Okay. So, yeah, I didn't see Monday Night Raw. So uh, you, all of y'all, the panel's going to have something up against me because I didn't see it. And um, yesterday I was flying. I spent mostly all Monday flying back from Texas to, to Baltimore. So I didn't get a chance to see it. But, um. The question at hand is the match. The match to me was subpar. I've seen better ladder matches. Um, it was a cool way to open the show, um, you know, uh, get, get the fans kind of going and everything. Um, Zack Ryder winning was pretty cool until I found out that he lost it the very next night. But I'm like I think Toph said, I piggyback on that. It was his WrestleMania moment, which he deserved. But I, I have to say there was no real big spots in the match that really stood out to me. And, I mean, I was there live. You know, there was no, ooh, you know, everything that happened, I've already seen it before. And, you know, at WrestleMania, it's supposed to be things that you've never seen before. You know, it's supposed to be, you know, the, the, the Night of the Immortals, you know. It's not something, you know, that you saw recycled from another pay-per-view or, you know, from another time. But um, I, I understand that, you know, they wanted to try to start it off strong and, you know, get the fans going and stuff. I it really didn't work for me, you know. I, I it, it was okay uh, match, and I only say okay because Zach Ryder won, and I didn't expect him to win. Right. And um, so I just leave it like that. It was, it was, yeah. It was, you know, so like Amy Mark said, it Ryder won. Um, it, it was a decent ladder match. It wasn't the best. It was not the worst. Uh, like you said, I give it about a C. Decent and had his little ooh ah moments, but decent match. It was okay. Any uh anybody want to add to the ladder match? What we uh no. um shout out to you the Dusty Rose ladder, the the black ladder with the polka dots. Which I will say, great spot. However, the ladder was not used at all, which I think was a waste. Why well, put that much which? time and put the prop if you're not going to allow the ladder to be used? That was some hard times. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Pork and beans and all. Uh, side note, guys. Um, I'm not sure if you saw it. What are your guys' thoughts on the Dusty Road statue? No, I, I think it's cool. Well deserved. Thank you, Mark. Told Saltine. I think it's. I think it's great they're honoring him. I just, you know, it's it shouldn't be. That's why they need a, a Hall of Fame, a physical Hall of Fame, to put this statue in. Besides that, all it is is a traveling gimmick piece, and I didn't like that. I want to see it put in a Hall of Fame. Uh, I agree. I guess, uh, uh, yeah. So, you thought? So. <clears throat> I pretty much what Mark said, a nice statue, but I think it will be a lot more impressive once they have a physical Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. So really respectful that they represent him at WrestleMania when the statue hit. I hope he'd be in the Hall of Fame team because I would like to see that down floor them. And I hope I go to WrestleMania and it'd be open by WrestleMania when we get down there for next year. Hmm, okay. There's nothing else to say for the ladder match. Second match. AJ Styles versus Chris Jericho. Um, Because, you know, everybody know we're good friends with AJ Styles. Happy for AJ that he got the beer mania. Um, AJ got a very good um, pop. So did Jericho. I'm I'm sorry. I I just can't get with AJ's entrance. I don't know if it's the music timing. I, I, I don't know. I just can't get with his entrance. But... 
uh, good pop. I, to me, I don't know, guys, I don't know how it looked on TV live. That match seemed so slow. It was like slow mm-hmm. motion. Like it was gosh. It it was. I don't. I don't know if they had to work on that chemistry. I don't know if AJ was nervous or Jericho was nervous. It just it just seemed like my last. Is like can we come on? People in the audience <laughs> just texting, doing random chants. I mean, we were happy to see AJ. Was happy for him, but I just the match just wasn't as good as I thought it was. And then Jericho won clean, which was a big shock to us. And um, shout out to um. I believe we tweeted, and you Mark tweeted, and we mentioned how the streak continues that the first time was at WrestleMania, loses, loses. Sting lost, AJ Styles loses. I thought, I get this match about, I get this match a D, because considering the, you know, considering the criteria of AJ Styles and Jericho, for this to be a WrestleMania match, it was not as good as I thought it was going to be. It wasn't. Now, this is my opinion. Go ahead, Angry Mark. We'll keep having Game Boy last since he wants to be last. <laughs> Go this Go match was just a total who gives a sh- nobody gives a shit about Mania. Um, the agent who was in charge of talking with AJ and Jericho should be fired. Um, whether it's Road Dog or whoever it was, because maybe Michael Hayes. The, Whoever the fuck it was, because I, I mean, I could sing or watch, you know, a mime perform better and be more entertaining than that match was. Okay, you bring in AJ Styles, you know, you put him with Jericho, you shove it down our throats, you know. The whole point of Jericho is to put AJ over. Okay, if this is how they were gonna do it, then they should have stopped the feud during Raw or SmackDown because there is no point in bearing AJ on Mania to Jericho, okay? And it just doesn't add up. I mean, yeah, they're putting AJ now. The loser, AJ Styles at Mania, is now elevated to the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship when the only person he's really wrestled is Y2J. Makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, yeah, AJ is going to get the pop. It's going to put Roman over more as a heel. But that just goes to show you how piss poor the booking is at WWE right now. So that's my thought on that match. I give it an F. Fourteen. I was really that it wasn't as great as I expected because that should have been the match at night with. Their height and with their abilities in the ring, I'm like, wow, this is been the best match on the show. And knowing AJ being in um, New Japan and what magic he put on at um, Rapper Kingdom, I was like real disappointed. I was like, it was slow. And it should have been like a fast paced, out of this world um, match. But yeah, it was real disappointing. Fourteen, did you say because of their height? Are you hyped by it? No, no, because I because I'm like that too. Because I used to be a fast paced rapper too. Because I'm like Cruiserweight doing crazy moves and stuff. Yeah, so I understand it would have been spectacular. Oh shit! All right, sorry, just had to chime in on that one. Keep going, Game Boy. <laughs> okay. Hey, so, <laughs> so go ahead. You know, what made this series of matches between Randy Orton and Christian so good was they had like five, six (laughs) matches, but each match they did something different that you hadn't seen before. They kept elevating it. That was what made the series of matches so good. This was the fourth match. There wasn't really anything in this match that was new or different. The, the, The feud in general peaked at the third match at Fastlane. There was no reason for the feud to continue. The fact that they were even wrestling was dumb to begin with. The match was slow, and, you know, I love Jericho to death, but AJ Styles has to slow himself down to work Jericho, and I feel like I feel like AJ is being held back. He needs to be fighting guys like Cesaro or whoever. You know, the match was very slow. There wasn't anything done in the match that really made you think it was the fourth match. What I, don't, what I dislike about this the most is I don't know what's going on. They keep demeaning the Styles clash, 
he's won several titles of that in TNA, Ring of Honor, and New Japan. But in WWE, you wouldn't know. It's just another move. He uses it, and they kick out. And then Jericho won. Like, what does Jericho gain from winning? And then when you look at what happened at Raw, it makes this even more confusing. If you remember, they did this with Ryback at WrestleMania 29. Remember, he lost to Mark Henry, and then he turned heel the next night, and then he was number one contender. That made no sense, 50-50 booking. That's what they did here. It made no sense at all. This match was basically like, you're not a WWE guy, you lose. So Chris Jericho can lose to Fandango. Fandango, who's a jobber on Superstar as a main event, he can lose to Fandango, but he beats AJ. Makes no sense. No sense. This is a dumb match. He gets a D. <laughs> match is bastardized. That, that match made Hogan and, and Hogan and Rock from 18 look like an X Division match. <laughs> He's sitting there laughing like, gosh, can this match speed up? It was like, is this is this Hogan and Warrior or is, is this AJ and, and, and Jericho? It was just so slow. It's like God. The the, feed, the the women's match was faster than them. Ever since your queen <laughs> said uh, Jericho was old and couldn't keep up with AJ, AJ went slow, so Jericho can't go win it. Which is actually kind of funny because uh, some people didn't mention they thought the same thing um, too. Energy Game Boy. Yeah. One thing that I'm starting to notice is that uh, outside of me doing the show, I, I work with. A guy, I do management for um, a man who is a professional wrestler. And uh, by me being a manager, I, I get a chance to go to wrestling school. I get a chance to be close to the ring. And I get a chance to see guys when they when they really can work. And I also can get a chance to see guys when they really need to get back in the gym. And nothing against Chris Jericho, because Jericho was a great star. He's a great athlete and stuff. But this match was bloody fucking horrible. I was bored. I was... Yes, I enjoy the fact that AJ performed at WrestleMania. I'm a, we're great friends with AJ and stuff, and I'm glad he had his WrestleMania moment, which is pretty much the theme of this whole fucking show, is that this, these are just WrestleMania moments. Because WrestleMania, it was it was subpar. But, you know, it's just a whole bunch of moments. And I was just, I, I was really disappointed in this match. I, I think that AJ needs to start working with other people. You know, I, I understand the whole... You know, they wanted to make sure they, they got together for WrestleMania to try to make something happen. But truth be told, you know, Jericho is established. Jericho is good. Jer- you know, we all know Y2J. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he's good. If he wants to work with somebody, then he needs to work with somebody new, somebody else, you know, somebody from NXT or something, or somebody who, who a Zack Ryder or somebody, you know, a Dolph Ziggler or something. You know what I mean? Don't work with AJ Styles because AJ Styles, you know, he needs to work with somebody who's a little bit more his speed. And uh, just to answer it, yeah, I have to agree with all of you. I have to give it a D. It, it was slow. It was hard to watch. It was kind of boring. And, you know, we've already seen it. It was deja vu, you know what I mean? And people's attention spans was only so far. So I just think it was just, just a waste of a match, you know. They could have used that time to put somebody else there to – really kind of, you know, give it that drive, especially coming off of that ladder match. It was bad booking, bad match. So. What what profit, what, what what reason do you think they had Jericho win besides AJ being in TNA and he not being a WWE guy? Jericho was already established. He clearly didn't need to win the match. Why did he let him win? <clears throat> do you guys think, like Toph mentioned, I thought – they let AJ lose because they knew going into Raw after me, they would have a win and be number one contenders against Roman Reigns. Yeah, they did. Yeah, it's just a classic well. example of fifty-fifty booking. And to to counter what to kind of piggyback what Andy Mock was saying, they've done it before. There's a lot of guys that lose their first Mania match, like Alberto Del Rio. He got the big push, and everyone thought that he was going to win at WrestleMania 27, and he lost. And I'm sure there's other examples. Well, I don't. Well, I, I don't, I, I don't count the real only because the real was supposed to win at twenty seven. The only reason why he didn't was because of the last minute um, news of Edge having to retire. So if Edge neck wasn't hurt the way it was, the real would have won originally. So we necessarily we can't necessarily count the real. 
they was going to let their real win. The only reason he lost well, was because Edge had to retire. Well, look at it this way. And here's why I think the booking of AJ Styles to be number one contender with Roman Reigns is really bad. Really bad. Roman Reigns has a hard time selling as it is. And, you know, how is he going to sell AJ's move set? How is he going to do the right bumps to sell AJ Styles? They just made the wrong fucking choice. You can't put Roman Reigns in the fucking ring with AJ. AJ's way too talented and gifted. It's going to look like a fucking autistic kid fighting a bull. <laughs> For me, the, the hard sorry. part about AJ <laughs> Roman is um, sorry. I, I find it unbelievable that he's going to be pinned by a spear after all the stuff he's been through. You know, in New Japan, TNA, Ring of Honor, he's he's had way worse finishers put on him. And you mean to tell me a spear is going to put him down? Remember, that's that's, there, that's there, what I don't get. It's WWE's world, so if it didn't happen in the E, it never happened before. But I agree with you, Toph. Like, really, what is the spear going to do to AJ? He's meant to fall worse. And, and, and to, to Angry Mark's credit, let's, let's think of two years ago, at was it Fastlane when it was Daniel Bryan against Reigns? Think about how Reigns sell Daniel Bryan's moves. Bryan was too fast for Reigns. Mm-hmm. He's too athletic. Too, he's too Pure athletic, right. And then what pisses me off about the Roman Reigns defenders is they say, oh, if Roman Reigns sucks, how come every time he has a one-on-one match, it's at least like three and a half or four stars? I'm like, because he was carried by his opponent. Brock Lesnar how, carried him. Daniel Bryan mm-hmm. carried him. Randy mm-hmm. Orton carried him. You know, and how, so it, how how's AJ supposed to do a Pele kick to Roman? Is he gonna duck? <laughs> how's I mean, he gonna sell the calf killer? How, how's he gonna sell that? Roman doesn't sell. I mean, you really and, don't. Yeah, and. And what, is Roman going to, you know, do a nice front flip bump and sell a Hurricane Rana? Holy shit. I haven't really? seen Roman. When's the last really? time you saw Roman Reigns take a face bump? Really? How's he going to sell the Stars class? Yeah. That's the question. How, how's he going to sell the moonsault tall. into the reverse DDT? You know, like someone like someone try to, like, plan out the match. How's this match going to go? You know Roman's going to get tired, like, after five minutes. No. The only way this match even works at all is literally if Roman Reigns obliterates him and you have AJ Salva fuck for Roman. That's the only way this will even even work is if you're literally putting AJ in there to literally make Roman look like a million bucks because Roman is going to make AJ look retarded. Hmm. <laughs> oh. huh? and, and, and some people Somebody tried earlier To compare AJ against Reigns Like like Brett and Diesel That's totally different Brett could work in the ring Diesel actually could sell And actually could work He was a good big guy It's totally different Brett and Diesel worked <clears throat> Yeah Diesel was so big That you never expected him To have to take a bump That was exactly. the persona I give Brett credit, man. He was able to make Diesel look good, and Diesel had like three moves. Right, and and, and Diesel didn't need a big move set because he was that big. But Nash could sell. You know, Brett. You know, and Diesel had good chemistry. They had very good matches. Roman Reigns can't even sell when he's standing up in the ring with a microphone turned off. Did you see him smiling during the whole segment about the with the four guys in the ring? When he was, you know, yeah. when he should be pissed. Oh yeah, well, well, we'll get to that. I think that's uh, that's them uh, changing Reigns' character since he's now the champ. They are kind of working him as a tweener. No, They're making him cocky co- now. It wasn't a cocky smile. Seriously, if you go back and watch that shit, he literally was laughing. Uh, I know yeah. what that is, man. But, but I know, you know what that is. Cocky, you know yeah, what the cocky. That's not even a cocky smile. I know what that is, man. This this is this is exactly what got John Cena in trouble. You know, like I don't know if anyone pays attention to like actual media, like the media interviews. Like let's ignore dirt sheets. Roman Reigns going into WrestleMania, like they interviewed him on different numerous media outlets, and they said, right. you know, a lot of the fans haven't connected with you. How do you feel? And Roman basically, more or less, this is the same exact stuff that Cena did 
And like 06, 07, Roman said to all my fans that support me, you're in for a good ride. For all the fans that don't like me, basically what he said was like tough shit, you know. So how many times did you see John Cena like in a feud with somebody like Edge or CM Punk or The Miz and they would do a promo and the whole time they're cutting a promo. Remember that little annoying smirk Cena would do like that, LOL, I'm going over smirk? Yeah, because he knew. He knew. It was like it was kind of a condescending, I'm going over this Sunday smirk, so what you say doesn't matter. Roman's starting to do that. It's, it's too late for this guy. It's, it's too late. Anyone that says this dude is going to be the face of the company, they're, you guys need to swallow a poison pill. It's, it's too late for this dude. And he, he knows it's too late. He knows. Like, so when they sent him out there last night, they didn't even try. Like, they didn't even try to protect him. He, he was pretty much like, you, you, you saw it. I don't even have to go into detail with it. Like, you saw it. We'll, we'll get to that match. All right, well, what's the next one on the agenda of WrestleMania 32? It is Tove. I'm going to let Tove go first. <laughs> it was the New Day, all about booty, mm. against the League of Nations. Uh, going to go backwards here, before we talk about the New Day, and yes, I will give my thorough thoughts on the New Day, being there live, and I will make Tove eat crow. League of Nations, first, who cares? To it, it it just it's funny how WWE with it being so big in the marketing and production and visuals, kind of like Zack Snyder, Batman, Superman. You really can tell when WWE doesn't care about your character. League of Nations had no WrestleMania entrance, no props, no new music, nothing. They just came out together. And I don't know if you saw it how it's on TV. They didn't even let their music play all the way through. They cut it off right before when he walked in the ring. <laughs> they just was there. Del Rio leaves us on the ground, works for WWE. Who cares about Del Rio? Of course, he's getting, he's on a lot of publicity work for the new Tapo Under Armour, um, whatever you call it, the whole, um, you call it, it's Tapo, right? The whole uh, apparel with Kofi Kingston. Other than that, Rusev, he hasn't been the same since he lost to Cena. Who cares about Sheamus? And then we know Barrett, of course, they was going to have, they was going to drop him out because he was about to leave. Two, New Day. And it's a game, boy, you was there. Yeah, you was there live with me. We saw probably, you know, it was, well, over 101,000 people there, right? Mm-hmm. Out of every 10 people, eight people had booty old shirts. We saw booty old shirts everywhere. And that's not including regular New Day apparel and the unicorns. As I said before, and I know Tove hates this to everyone else, New Day is the most over thing in WWE. New Day had an amazing pop. Everybody did New Day chants while we was outside waiting. People was driving down the street all during the weekend, saying bootios, eat your bootios, New Day, doing the New Day claps. Let, 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 me, let me stop you for real quick and so I can Good. say this, to just clear Good. it up. New Day is the biggest thing in the WWE. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen over 100,000 people. Matter of fact, I take it even further than that. New Day had the biggest pop in the whole WrestleMania. The no, biggest pop. I'm, I'm talking about with the Shane McMahon stuff. I'm talking about with the Triple H intro. And all. New Day had the biggest pop in the whole WrestleMania. Yes. I've seen it with my own fucking that eyes. That is true. The shit was fucking crazy. And almost every person you Dan they saw, like like Tech said, almost almost every five to ten person you saw had a New Day shirt or a Booty O shirt on. It is the craziest shit ever. I just sat in oh, my booty chair. Boxes. I, I just I I just I couldn't even. I just looked around and like I felt like in the Twilight Zone. Like I was looking around, like how the fuck can y'all cheer for this shit? Now, like I who I just who who told you Game Boy? Who told you Tech? In December, that they were going to be the most over thing in WWE. Who said that? You said it, but we said it the week before you, though. Nice try. You know what? You know what? <laughs> yeah. Mark, you can have that, yo. Nah, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, you, you, you can have that. I, 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 I don't, mind, I don't even mind did. giving that to you, yo. You're right. Yeah. You, you got you that, did. yo. You said it. You know Thank you, Mark, got you that. say that. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, so I, I, gave, you got I gave him a little bit of respect. But I, I, I'll say my I'll say my piece when it's my turn. I, I want to make sure we keep the keep the show going. So y'all y'all fellas y'all go ahead. New New Day is the most over 
is is the most over thing in WWE has. The only thing that's that was over nearly halfway as close was Miz Dow. Everybody had booty old shirts. The entrance was amazing. The booty old box, the cereal, and shout out you no know, NFC Game Boy marked out so that uh, we don't do it often. Dragon Ball Z, you know, coming out of the Saiyans. Xavier Woods wearing the Saiyans, the Saiyan tail, like Vegeta. Great stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm all, I'm all done for that. Yeah, I, I that was great. Lie. I'm all done for that too. I'm not done for that. Now, so we're going to let you go first because I know this is your favorite topic. Go ahead, brother. Man, not much else to say. It was a, it was a filler match. Amen. Any thoughts on the, any thoughts on the uh, New Day entrance? And I, I know you're an anime fan. It's like I am. For anime buff, it's like I am. Uh, what do you think of the New Day, the Saiyans, uh, Saiyans entrance? No, that was cool. It was a nice touch. I heard they wanted to do something different, but they weren't able to. So, But I thought the uh, design was neat. Uh, there's an interesting t- statistic. not sure if anyone caught it, but uh, a lot of people that have the special interests at Mania tend to lose. Maybe it's a coincidence WWE never noticed. But um, if yeah, you go back and look at some of the previous Mania, if you look, if you look at some of the previous Manias, almost not all of them, but most people that get a special entrance lose. It's like I, I can't give you the exact percentage, but there's a strong 80% of performers that have a special entrance they lose. But uh, the match itself was just there. Uh, when I, I wasn't sure if the titles were on the line or not, there was some confusion about it. And when I heard the titles were not on the line, I figured, well, there's really no reason for them to win, so they lost. So, But, uh, you know, the match was just a setup for the Stone Cold, Mick Foley, Shawn Michaels thing. Uh, Shawn Michaels looked in great shape. He he looked in great shape with his in-ring gear. He's losing his hair, though. But uh, Michaels oh, looked yeah. great. He looks like he's ready to come back if he wanted to. Uh, Foley looked like Foley, and Austin was Austin. So, you know, I, I don't think Xavier should have took the stunner. If you're going to give someone a stunner, give, like, you know, Sheamus a stunner. Why well, give Xavier one? But, uh, you know, this match was just there. It was just a killer cool-off match, I guess. Mm-hmm. Angry Mark. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, I'll keep this to three minutes or less. All right, so New Day, great, great job, great pops. You know, love them or hate them, they're the hottest thing going today. Um, And this is coming from the white, bald guy with a goatee in Pennsylvania who's been saying this for goddamn seven months now. And finally, people are paying attention to the New Day. Okay. Now, the whole League of Nations, it's the League of Who Gives a Shit. It's, you know, it's the never is, never was, and never will be. Okay. So we look at what happened with these guys, you know, and then Barrett on Raw gets kicked out of the group. Um, and now Barrett is degraded to being nothing more than a joke on the network because every segment involving Wade Barrett on the WWE network starts out with a Campax commercial. Okay. Mm. True story, guys. Every Wade Barrett video starts out with a Campax. So I don't know how coincidental that is, but I guess that's called giving him the plug. So, all right, now we have The Rock. Well, no, sorry. Mick Foley, Shawn Michaels, Steve Austin. What a fucking waste of money. Okay? And the hilarious part is Stone Cold's out there. You know, he's drinking his Stone Cold IPA beer, and they will not zoom in on the can. I fucking loved it. I loved that part. Vince would not show the can up close to promote Austin's beer. Okay? Because he had to pay Austin too much money to do a wasteful spot. That didn't mean shit. Uh, 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 question, guys. They're live. Austin put up his middle fingers. Did, yes, they, did, did that come we, off we, on the we, network? Yes, it did. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Just, curious. okay. Just curious. This meant absolutely nothing at all. Little- okay. And it was piss poor use of money. It was piss poor booking. You know, I would have loved to see Stone Cold or. HBK involved in the main event. I would have loved to see Mick Foley I agree. As, the, as the guest enforcer, or okay, the guest referee for Hell in a Cell. It would have I been agree. great to see 
can you imagine Shane going to the top and fully being like, no, it's not worth it, Shane. Don't do it. Feel better to try and talk him down than Mick Foley. You know? It was mm-hmm. it would have been great. You know, but they just wasted every aspect of this match. It carried over on Raw with just a wasteful booking of you know, Wade Barrett, yes, he's leaving the company. That's open knowledge, so they're like, fuck it, we're gonna probably send him home now. He's gonna get paid the downside of his contract to sit on his ass. So congratulations, Wade Barrett, you're getting paid to sit on your ass at home. Seamus, Rusev, Del Rio, you're nothing more than, you know, just really piss poor booking. Sorry for that, but now you guys are kind of down the road to no return, and we will see you on a future episode of Ring of Honor or Reach Underground. So, uh, see, your thoughts, man. The only thing I liked about the match was the Dragon Ball Z reference. I, I kind of like that. That was really, you know, nostalgia for me. Um, but the match was, it was just, it was a filler match, and I agree with everyone with that because it didn't have that pizzazz to it. It was just there. So that's all I could say about the match. Hmm. Any game boy? Any last thoughts on New Day and Austin? Uh, I, I really didn't like the match that much. Um. I, I still not a fan of New Day. I did give them a little bit of props because they did the Dragon Ball reference, but um, the match was just, uh, I mean, I did pop when seeing the old guys come out there because I'd never seen them before live. Yeah. So yeah, maybe that was that was like my WrestleMania moment, whatever, but nothing really stood out in this match. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, it, it was uh, funny Keep watching going. the New Day walk into the cereal box so after they knocked it down. I know y'all couldn't see it off camera, but we can see them uh, walking around the box and then going inside of there. That, that that was kind of funny. But uh, other than that, no, nothing really stood out in this match besides the costume. If they would have wore their regular costumes and stuff, I probably went and used the bathroom or something. I would have went and got some food, truth be told. But by them having the Dragon Ball references, it actually kind of made me want to watch a little bit. That's the only reason I even paid attention. So, well, shout out there for Sister Queen who did a uh, buy box studios. Yeah, yeah. Cause you ain't mm-hmm. you ain't booty. Any other thoughts on a uh, new day and uh, League of Nations? Or who cares? I actually did go to the bathroom during that match to the Game Boy. I'm sorry. Say it again. I actually went to the restaurant during that match. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it 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 really just calls to you in certain matches. Like the bathroom just calls to you. you know what I mean? Yeah. So I had a chant going. It was Angel Soft Rocks. Angel Soft Rocks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> to the next match. Dean Ambrose against Brock Lesnar. If you don't mind, I'll take this one when you finish. Oh, boy. Yes, get toast. Yeah, get toast. Okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) No problem. A few live notes. You guys did not see this. I will give it up to WWE. I don't know if they will start doing this for this mania, but they actually had on a big screen actual chants and actual counts for every time (laughs) Dean Ambrose got C-Plex. So because it was C-Plex City, every time he got German C-Plex or got put in any C-Plex, the, count, the number count actually came up on screen, which we thought was great. And the final number, what was it, GB? Was it Game Boy? Was it, was I it think, 18? I think it was 13. I think it was 13. I thought it was more than 13. Was it 13? I thought it was more than 13. No, it was, I think it was 13. It was like 30. 30. You, guys, you guys can't agree. Just go with double digits. Well, no, we double digits. I think it was 13. 13? Okay. Yeah, they were 13. Yeah. thought it was great. And go ahead, So if I know you want to take take this one first. Go ahead. Street fight. Your thoughts? Okay. Um, what Angry Mark was saying at the beginning about how much these legends are being paid and was it really worth the money. This match was 
a disgrace to me and to anyone that paid money to see this. You know, I'm only 28 years old, so my memories of Andre the Giant are very vague. But from what I've been told from the people that were a lot older than me, they said that as cool as Andre was, Andre was kind of a problem because no one could believably beat him. So he was kind of a, a burden to the roster at the time because if, if he wanted, he could just go to town on anybody. So he became an issue. So Brock Lesnar is kind of like the closest thing to that in the sense that there's really no one on the roster that can believably beat him. So you have a street fight with Dean Ambrose, and with a street fight, you have anything goes. So here is one of the few opportunities you have to not to have Brock Lesnar lose. And if you're not going to have him lose, this is one of the few opportunities you have to make him look weak. And when you consider the indie background of Dean Ambrose, and when you consider the MMA UFC background of Brock Lesnar, as well as the fact that this is a guy that doesn't mind, you know, taking some blood and stuff, on paper, this looks like a really fun match. But what we got was a regular match that you would see on Raw or SmackDown. This match was not a street fight. It was not no hose. This was pathetic. Where was the blood? Where was the violence? Where was the tables? There was EC3 versus Rockstar Spud on Impact was more violent than this piece of shit. <laughs> what did you have? You had chairs, a fire extinguisher? <laughs> what? what? And, you know, and the worst part is, the worst part is, it's like, all right, so you want to have Brock Lesnar win. Cool. If you're going to have Lesnar win, why not at least put Ambrose over? Like, have Ambrose bring Lesnar really close to the feet, right? So when the match is over, have, like, Lesnar shake his hand. Or have Heyman shake his hand, you know, kind of like what Undertaker did for Jeff Hardy at that ladder match all those years ago. You didn't even get that. Lesnar just did one F5, and that was it. So, you know, you got Roman Reigns, you got Triple H, you got John Cena. They kick out of finishers, even AJ Styles, and he's new. You have AJ Styles kicking out of finishers. But every time Ambrose gets hit by a finisher, that's it. One spear, over. One pedigree, over. One at five, over. This is a problem. See, I don't even like Ambrose like that. Ambrose, he's okay with me, but there's other people out there that do like Ambrose. And when you continually book a guy like a loser, the fans, they lose interest because they know he's a loser and they stop caring. That's what happened to Ziggler. That's what happened to Ryder. That's what happened to Christian. That's what happened to Damian Sandow, Mizdow, whatever. This match was pathetic. This, this match was pathetic. Okay. This there's no there's no defense for this match. It wasn't even a street fight. You this there is nothing that you saw in this match that you have not seen on a match on Raw SmackDown or some other indie show. This was a false count anywhere match at best with a few chair shots. This was a joke. Failure. <laughs> I'm sorry, little Smash Brothers uh <laughs> I played Smash Bros for years. I always used to hear that shit. Failure. <laughs> oh boy, that's funny to me. Uh, okay. Right, I guess I'll chime in a little bit. D- y'all fellas don't mind if I chime in on this one, do y'all? It's your fucking show. Okay, good. Anyway, so me personally, I think this was the worst match of the whole card. Now, I know y'all saying that, you know, AJ Styles and stuff. Yeah, but I think this was the worst match on the card. Um, piggyback off of Tolf. Yes, I think that Brock Lesnar, and, and mind you, I'm a big Brock Lesnar fan. I was the one that was rooting for him at WrestleMania 30. I was the one rooting for him last year at WrestleMania 31. I, I'm a big Brock Lesnar fan, always have been. Love the character. But, yeah, the problem is is that no one can fucking beat him, so it's kind of hard to book him, like he said, because nobody can beat him. Well, when you have a situation such as Dean Ambrose, and, you know, I'm I'm not a Dean Ambrose fan. You know, I, actually, I like Seth Rollins better than the other two members of the so-called Shield. And this match was so dry, so comical. Even the even the, some of the fans that were sitting next to us, like Afrocentric Queen and them, uh, even the fans that were sitting next to us was like, really? Like, that's it? Like, one F5 on some chairs and he's done? 
Like, this is supposed to be this tough guy that keep going and, you know, got the heart of a champion and, you know, the uh, I guess, uh, uh, you know, uh, Tiger, you know, heart of the Tiger or whatever, and this is what puts him away. It was the most comical shit ever. And it really was just a waste of time because he, you couldn't even build off of that. And sadly, you know, Brock Lesnar, he didn't even break a sweat. He didn't bleed. He didn't act sore. He just kept laughing. It was funny to him. If he got hit, he ran under the ropes. He chased him a little bit, and that was the end. He got he got him back. You know, it it just it was a it was pretty much the worst match on the card in my opinion, only because it had so much potential, and like Toph said, you know, with with his indie background with with Dean Ambrose and stuff being, you know. He had to fight back, and he didn't even use it. It is like it made no fucking sense. Like they have these props. It, it's kind of like the uh, the ladder, um, you know, the the dusty ladder. It's like he had this prop, and he's about to use it, and he didn't use it. And I know somebody put up a a, a status. One of our homeboys, he was like a, I guess um, Dean Ambrose and uh, Negan from from Walking Dead both had the same idea on Sunday. Both had spiked bats and didn't use it. So it, it was just, it was the worst match on the card, in my opinion. It and to the, 